I can't or will play that. You would men say you can. Swift to be protected. My network is secret use. You would men say. We would see you keep at it or will play that. Hello, Mr. Niren here. Welcome to Hyrule to the War. <coughs> this is actually an updated version 4.6, a release of Hyrule to the War released on June 22nd, 20, uh, 2017, by the original creator and the Nephilim or Ice Cream Man. <coughs> so, uh, this version is not 4.6, it's an updated version of it named 4.7. And I'm gonna play test the game as, a different, as different factions. But before I start the campaign, I thought about just starting the game as every faction and checking out custom battle and such to show the features of the game. So we have a different background here, same as in 4.6, different from Classic Ultimate or the older versions of Harry War, which Classic Ultimate is based on. Classic Ultimate was based on the December 2014 release of Harry War. And this 4.7 release is based on the June 22nd, 2017 release of Herald War, which has replaced most of the factions rosters with HD models and uh, have a new map <coughs> and new scripts. Many of the old scripts are kept, but many have been um, uh, replaced with others and removed. Uh, Classic Ultimate had a lot of really extensive scripts that uh, probably would have been annoying to re-implement. Uh, when you change the map, usually you need to <laughs> re-implement all the scripts from scratch, so because the coordinates on the map are different. But I believe the, the new map is the old map, just expanded. So it's the same map, but with, uh, I believe, more regions on it, and uh, it's been uh, remade, so it looks different, it's uh, larger, but it's the same map at the core. Because the coordinates for some characters were the same when I moved them over from Classic. I believe uh, characters like uh, Deetle or Vativrat, that, that the coordinates for the, for the capitals etc. were still the same. So it's an improved uh, old map. It's been made bigger with more regions and such. <coughs> so the map is the same as in 4.6. Okay, free from campaign. We only have one campaign in this mod. And uh, these are the playable factions. We have the Kingdom of Hyrule. And uh, this mod takes place later than, than Classic Ultimate. So the old versions of Hyrule War started, I believe, uh, uh, it says North Hyrule Field one after Ganon, so that's the same as in uh, Hyrule Classic and the older versions. The date hasn't been changed, but it's 
different setting because in the older versions of Hyrule to War and in Classic Ultimate you started with Princess Zelda 1 and then <coughs> on turn 54 or 53 you got Zelda 3 Zelda 2 I mean and on 91 you got Zelda 3 and then on turn 135 or 36 you got Zelda 4 and then on turn 151 you got Zelda 5 and then in my submar I added Terralina as an adult too from Great Sea to War who would spawn on turn 171 but in, in this mod you start later so you, so you have Zelda 5 from the start she would spawn on turn 151 as I said so <coughs> this mod is essentially starting in the late game of the old mod when it comes to the Kingdom of Hyrule at least as we have Zelda 5 leading the faction from the start so you don't get Zelda 1, 2, 3 and 4 <coughs> but Zelda 4 is in the game she is actually Shriek in the Shrekka faction so she is one of the Shrekka heroes and is the mother of Zelda 5 and Zelda 3 is also in the, in the game in the form of uh, Majora Cultist Zelda she was uh, kind of resurrected from the dead by the powers of Majora so she is in the game too as a, a Majora hero okay but uh, Zelda 5 is the leader of the Kingdom of Hyrule the start of the game and uh, other heroes we can see playstyle generalist and army focus infantry uh, commanders you can see also that the details have been changed the descriptions are way shorter for every faction which is I believe uh, it reduces loading times in, in the game when, when the descriptions aren't too long if they are too long the loading times are increased so in the old mod and in classic ultimate my sub mod for the old mod uh, they um, were much longer and detailed but uh, that caused increased loading times so loading times will be faster here we have two different campaigns domination hall 75 regions that's the only uh, goal you don't need to kill off any faction you don't need to hold specific regions you just need to take 75 regions you do have alliances and such at the start of the game too so you can still see who is an enemy and who is an ally uh, in the short campaign it's named vendetta instead where you need to hold only 20 regions but you also need to eliminate your main rivals the gerudo and the moblins um, so if this was a sub mod i would probably have kept this goal for the domination campaign but because this is 4.7 I didn't want to change NEP's setup, so under Nephilim's setup, so I didn't add any new goals or change stuff uh, that might uh, go against his original plans. Uh, so I would probably prefer to have uh, eliminate factions as a goal, but or take certain regions. But this is how uh, under Nephilim had made it. So the short campaign is eliminate factions and the long campaign is just hold 75 regions the one that captures 75 regions first has won the campaign essentially uh, so and I kinda like the idea of killing off the main rivals but if you play this campaign you can still do that you just don't have it as a goal okay and the uh, heroes you can see the heroes here so in medieval total war kingdoms there is a bug in original Hyrule to the War, you also had a, a picture here of Zelda, I believe, and others for the other campaign. And you had a picture here, and uh, you actually had no picture here because the hero picture was placed here. And this was just text. And uh, I believe that there is a limit to how many map pictures this picture you can have. And because of that limit, when you, I believe, uh, had more than uh, I don't remember if it was more than 16 factions or I don't think so I think it was more than 22 factions if you had more than 22 factions with unique maps it would uh, crash when you selected the uh, factions in a row so you wouldn't be able to click on everyone in a row because it would crash due to the limit on map pictures and in classic ultimate I managed to solve this issue by um, Re replacing a file that changed the UI 
because there is no limit on the special unit cards you used to have in other mods that the special unit here so you can have a, a limitless number of pictures here but only 22 here and uh, the, the UI files changed that so that the map area, the area of the map picture was used by the special unit card and the area of the map picture was used by the I mean the area of the special unit card was used for the map picture so in classic ultimate I just used one single picture as the map picture and it was located here where the special unit is normally located so that it won't, won't cause a crash when you select many factions in a row we had uh, 28 factions in the campaign there well in this mode we have 22 factions um, playable then there are a few factions that are unplayable that are in the campaign but you can still take control of them if you play a hot seat campaign and use the console command to control faction uh, and write the name of the faction then then you can control them so you can still place the minor factions but you need to take control of them in a hot seat campaign after you have started the game so this UI do not allow for more factions than 22 I believe and uh, we have 22 now we had room for one more faction Church of Miura We'll, uh, we will speak more about them later but uh, anyway the, uh, what I was saying was that in classic ultimate I used one single picture for the map picture and it was located at the spot of the special unit card where these heroes are shown and then I used the special unit cards as the map pictures so I could have uh, all different cards here for different for, for all different factions despite them being 28 without them crashing when selecting them in a row uh, but uh, Andai Nephilim uh, sold it in a different way because I tried replacing the UI with the files of classic and then this picture became messed up because this is not a new UI uh, he uh, instead made a picture where the map picture and uh, special unit picture is the same picture essentially and made it so that they are located at the right spot that, that means that <coughs> we, we still can't have more than 22 factions in the faction selection screen if I were to go to the desk strat file and enable all the other factions then they wouldn't show up I could only make one more faction show up in the faction selection screen and that's because Medieval Total War Kingdoms originally had 22 factions so there were no room for more than 22 factions <coughs> and later modders have uh, increased the, the space of, of the UI so that it can have uh, up to 30 factions and Classic Ultimate is using uh, like a port UI of Call of Warhammer which allowed the mod to increase the number of factions in the custom battles and in the faction selection screen of the campaign this screen with 30 factions but we only had 20, 28 and without them crashing but in this mod we are still limited to 22 because Andre Nephilim hasn't replaced the UI instead he f solved the issue with not having a card for everyone I believe by the limit for crashing might have been 16 factions actually so when you select more in a row than 16 it might still have crashed, I could be wrong or it's 22 but anyway he sold it so that we have only one picture in use uh, that shows uh, both this picture and this picture and as such uh, there is still no room for more factions than 22 in the faction selection screen so we've added one more faction but we wouldn't be able to add any more. When I tried to replace the UI with the classic ultimate UI, the picture became messed up, and I would essentially have had to, <coughs> to uh, I believe, uh, resize every single picture and divide these two into two different pictures. And I believe that we wouldn't be able to have uh, this hero picture for every single faction because in classic ultimate I'm using a single picture for every single faction in this area so it would kind of remove this uh, picture of the heroes if I used the other UI that allows more factions uh, so I didn't 
change that at the end of the day I returned the, the UI to have it there in 4.6 meaning we are limited to 22 factions here okay Kingdom of Hyrule we can see their heroes Princess Zelda Tr uh, Tetralina Pin Princess Tetralina No Hansen Zelda 5 of the Kingdom of Hyrule we have Link the hero of time heir of King Gustav so he is a hero now from the start. He is only in the Kingdom of Hyrule, unlike in Classic Ultimate. So and in Nephilim originally for Classic, when it was the main mod, he planned to have Link in every single faction as a mercenary. But he changed his mind later for this version of Hyrule to the War. So Link is unique to Kingdom of Hyrule in this version of Hyrule to the War. But originally he planned to have Link in every single faction. And I followed his original plans in Classic Ultimate, so I added Link to a lot of factions. But not, uh, I believe in this mod, only the Giant Hero spawned through the Desk Strat on turn 2. But in, in Classic, you have every hero spawning through the Desk Scripts file. Um, while in this mod, only the Giants do. So the other heroes, they spawn in the Desk Strat and uh, that means that they spawn in the beginning of the game and uh, if we add more heroes for example if we add Link to all factions through the desk strat then he would exist in all the factions at once uh, but when you add him to a script in the desk scripts file he, he, he can be uh, conditioned only to spawn for the faction that the player is playing as so you won't have many links in the campaign will have link for the faction the players places but if you have them in the in the desk strat then he will spawn for everyone at the start of the game so you would have like uh, if you have link in every faction you would have uh, like 22 different links at the same time so obviously in this version he is unique to the kingdom of Hyrule as all the normal heroes spawn from the desk strat and not the desk scripts file then we have King Kazak he was a general in Hyrule War Classic 2, but the late game generally spawned with uh, Princess Zelda 3 on turn 91. But here, yes, the starting hero, all the normal heroes are starting heroes. The Giants also count as starting heroes, they spawn on turn 2. Uh, and there are no event pictures or messages when heroes spawn, so, so you won't be pestered on turn 2 with a lot of messages. Anyway, King Kazak is a hero. But he has given the crown over to his daughter, Princess Zelda, at the start of the campaign. She is no longer wearing the crown. There are two models of this guy, one with the crown and one without the crown. And uh, he is not using the crown uh, model in the campaign. And then we have Roro, Sage of Time. So I believe that Roro was a hero, starting hero in, in the old war mod. And Link was a mercenary hero that I added to many factions. He wasn't really a Hyrule hero. Uh, but intended for many factions. Kazak was a Hyrule hero, but he wasn't King Kazak, he was General Kazak in Hyrule War because it's set earlier. He was a general under Princess Zelda 3. Marala no in Zelda 3. And um, Princess Zelda 5 was a hero in the Kingdom of Hyrule, but she spawned on turn 151. It's just very late game. Very f few people would play that long. So she hardly showed up, probably, in most people's campaigns. Anyway, here she is a starting hero. Okay, so these are the heroes of the Kingdom of Hyrule. And then we have the Gerudo. We have Ganondorf here instead of Finroa in this mod. Because it's set in the late game. In classic, Ganondorf would spawn on turn 86 in the late game. But in this mod, he has already spawned. He is available from the start. You can see here the picture here. Gan and Dwarf and uh, some Gerard of Women at his side. Playstyle rating, army, focus, archers and cavalry. So they have like the best archers and or, uh, horse cavalry, I mean horse archer cavalry in the game. Heroes, we have Emperor Gan and Dwarf, and we have Nabru, Sage of Spirits, and we have Comb and Kotak. I don't know which one is who, they are twins look the same, just one has a red uh, ball here and one has a blue one. Uh, so they are the witches that turn into Twin Roa 
the main leader of Ger the Gerudo in the old version. Uh, but here they are not the twin Roa, instead they are their separate forms. And uh, they are older here, they were young in the old version, here they are old. And uh, Nabor is still young, uh, which is good. Uh, but it's probably because it would look bad otherwise, but uh, yeah, it's a later setting, so if it was uh, more lore accurate, it would probably be old by this time. Um, at least older, to, uh, middle aged, probably like Ganondorf, because Ganondorf is her like husband. Okay, and he was very younger in the other mode. Uh, but and Nabori was about the same. Uh, okay, so these are the heroes of the Gerudo. <coughs> uh, Comb and Kotak were in the old mode, but they were younger. But they would only spawn. Uh, as one unit, I believe one of them were an officer and the other were a general and uh, they only spawned in my submod, they weren't in, in the campaign in the old versions but they were in my submod uh, if Tinrova was killed and you held uh, Sanadorf in this mod you have all the heroes as starting heroes and they are separate heroes okay, we can deselect the kingdom of Hyrule and go to the Gorons and the Gorons Playstyle Aggression, Armor Focus, Infantry Siege They have the best siege in the game And really good heavy infantry Heroes, Darunia, Sage of Fire And General Dangoro And we have uh, King Dodongo Leader of the Dodongos, Dodongos Cavern And we have Bigoron, the guy in Goron So the same heroes as in Classic And you have them from the start Unlike in Classic where you get General Dangoro late game I believe and the King Dodungo you need to kill him in, in the Dungus Cavern he's a hero of the wild animals a cut faction in this mod replaced by a different one and um, then he spawns one turn later as King Dodungo for the Gorons but in this mod you get them all from the start and uh, do not have to kill him first uh, so the Gorons have had uh, all the factions have been overhauled they have uh, HD models based on uh, Harul Warriors, a game from 2014. So we, we can see that there are, it's a different style here. Uh, and uh, yeah, the AR HD looks different from the old mod. Uh, but the Gorons have a completely different style. They are small, like in Harul Warriors and in the modern Zelda games. Uh, there are some big ones too, but most of them are small. In, in uh, The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess, they were very, very huge guys. And I believe the old version of the Root War class, uh, which Classics is based on, uh, was based more on Twilight Princess and Ocarina of Time. While uh, this mod is based on Hyrule Warriors, so that's why there is a style change. This mod is based on the later titles and old version was based on the older titles in terms of the aesthetic of the, the characters and units and such. So um, the Gorons look very different but have the same units and same heroes. Okay, Then we have the Sora's Dominion. The Sora. They too have a new style. The HD models, which I love by the way. I think they look great. I th think the old style uh, looked cool too. I think the some units looked cooler in the old. Uh, I think the male ones with armor looked really cool there. But but the females here look uh, better, more feminine. Uh, they looked feminine in the old one too, but here they look even better. Okay, um, and the playstyle defensive, army focus, archers slash commanders, heroes. We have uh, King, Fa King uh, Sora Farkas the Bon, the 16th heroes. Uh, we have uh, Princess Ruto too. We have uh, Advisor Selene, or Ambassador Selene. And we have, uh, in the former mod, she was called Priestess Tilara. But here I believe she might be something else than a Priestess. But I don't remember exactly what. If she was a nurse, maybe. Anyway, uh, we have the same heroes with new models. And the roster is overhauled, and it's pretty much the same roster with some changes to it. 
Then we have the Kiri, Children of the Forest, led by the Great Dictory, Playstyle Swarm, Army Focus, Archers, Slash Infantry, Heroes, the Great Dictory, Saria, Siege of Forests, Mido, Chieftain of the Kokiri, or Chief of the Kokiri, and we have Mirora, like the successor, Chief of the Kokiri, after Mido was uh, banned from the, banished from the forest, because she wanted more power than he was given, and committed some crimes and were banished and uh, joined the Goma faction and the Mirora girl it was given the title that he used to have by the, the Great Dictory it's the same heroes as in the other mod but now they have HD models uh, they do look a little bit older I think the, the, the heroes uh, they looked a little a little bit um, younger in the old mod they are still young Okay, and uh, they look more like teens in this mod. Well, in the old mod, they look more like uh, very young kids. Okay, and uh, yeah, the roster has been overhauled. They have essentially the same units, just with better models. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's the Kokiri. Then we have the Goma, led by the Fallen Sage. So, Caris, the ugly. This girl. Um, she looks like this, she's huge. Reminds me of uh, the leader of the Zerg in uh, StarCraft. Okay, so they are Swarm Faction 2. Uh, army focused infantry slash cavalry, so they have a lot of smaller Goma spiders. And then they have some really big ones, giants. They remind me of the Zerg or, or the Tyranids in Warhammer 40,000 or the Arachnids and Starship Troopers, actually. They are uh, an insect faction led by a giant female monstrosity. Okay, and um, unlike the Kiri, who also was a swarm faction, they are very numerous too. They, they, they focused on archers and infantry, while the Goma focused on infantry and cavalry. And their cavalry is essentially giant spiders and monsters. Yeah. <coughs> mutated spiders and their heroes they have Slucaris herself, they have a giant spider called the Matriarch they have Gitta, a girl and they have Mido because he betrayed the forest and joined the Goma so, so Mido in this mod exists for both factions at the start of the game at the same time in, in classic I believe that he spawns for the Goma after he's killed for the Kukiri. So he spawns in the Kukiri at the start of the game. And when he's killed, he, he spawns until later for the Goma. But in this mod, he is available to both factions at the start, but it's the same character. Even though the, the Goma, Mido, is a later character, it's Mido after he left the forest. So, yeah. They have the same heroes and the same roster, even the same units, just uh, different models have been improved. Okay, then we have the Duna province. Leader Mayor Bo. He's much older here. He was younger in the other mod. He is an old man here. Which fits the later setting. We have a picture here of Ilya, the horse breeder. And um, or horse ran uh, rancher, I don't know. Uh, and some cavalry. Placed a generalist army focus. <coughs> cavalry, Spearman, they have the best cavalry in the mod. Actually, heroes, Mirbo, Ilya, Russell the Swordsman, and Ashe the Markner. She's no longer a Markner here. She was Markner in the classic version of the mod. And available to the Kingdom of Hyrule, the Runa Province, and the Lebrina regime. She was hired, hireable in. recruitable in Lebrina. But in this mod, she has been made an Adunian hero. I believe in the official game, The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess, she was an Odunian girl. So it makes sense that she would be available to Duna. <coughs> the official model of um, Ashe in Twilight Princess looked exactly like the Labrina model from Classic 2. She, she is very similar here. She has just lost the, the golden plate, I believe, on, on the stomach. The, Le Le the Lebrunian armor, I believe. 
Uh, so it's the same heroes, but Mirbo is older. And an updated roster. We have the La 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 Euro Province, <coughs> led by Queen Rutla. Then HD roster. They have essentially the same roster too. Just with HD models. Defensive playstyle. Yeah, they are defense. They defend against the Visrobe and Gorm and others. Army focus infantry spearmen. So they have mostly basic infantry. They do not have a lot of armor and uh, they don't have mages and such. So they, they are rather weak, but they are rich. Very wealthy faction. Heroes. So we have General Rutala. We have her son, Prince Rallis. We have Lerta, the future queen. Uh, she's not royalty, but uh, I believe uh, Rutala was killed and uh, she became a uh, queen later. Some matriarch, I believe, so Rallis didn't get the crown for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but probably because they are led by the queens. Uh, okay, and uh, maybe he married uh, Lerta, I don't know. But anyway, Adia, that's Marshal Adia here. She was General Lady and other more. But she is the leader of the army. The commander. And Lert is just one of the heroes. And Prince and Queen. Okay, so this faction is very similar to in the other mode used with HD models. Then we have the Deku Scrubs or Deku Tribes. Leader is King Kudluka. Uh, or Kudlu Khan. So in this mod, all the Deku Scrub heroes have gotten names. In the old mod, they didn't have any uh, like real names. They were just named the, the Deku King or the Deku Princess. Well, here they are named King Kudlu Khan, etc. So they have more detail. Also, the Deku Scrub roster has been remade three times in the original release. From the custom battle only release in 2011 during the spring and uh, the first campaign release in September 2012 uh, until I believe uh, 2013 or so in December. They had one roster, it was very similar to this roster but with very old updated models that were too small, they would end up beneath the ground on many battlefields, which didn't look good. So and they definitely remade the roster in 2013 and uh, we got a new roster that was based on, I believe the old roster, the first roster was based on Ocarina of Time uh, I believe, or Majora's Mask where uh, they looked like in those older titles and then in 2013 when he remade the roster he based it on fan art from the event art fan art page there so they looked very different, very unique. They were cool, but they, they didn't look like in the official titles. They, they had a very distinct, unique new look based on a fan's art. And then when he made the HD rosters, he remade it a third time. Where he returned them to the more official style, like the old roster, but instead made them bigger. So they are, they are much taller than the the, the units were in the first few releases of Root of War and they have uh, much more detail, they are HD and all the units look great and uh, also unlike in the other two rosters they have way more cavalry now like uh, scrubs riding beetles and such and have a lot of cool new projectiles, new, new mounts and such so this faction is very different from the other two but has a more official style than the second roster and uh, it's much better implemented than the first roster because they are taller so they don't end up beneath the ground and such. So this is the best roster for the DX scraps for sure. Classic Ultimate is using the second roster based on the fan art. And then there were some older releases of Arrival Ultimate War that used the first roster. Uh, so in, in this mod 4.7 and in 4.5 and 4.6 available on motherpay.com they look like this. Uh, they don't. Uh, I don't believe they were in 4.5. They were added in 4.6. So yeah, this is the best deck roster. They look the best here and have the coolest roster. And uh, they have the same heroes. They have uh, the deck king, 
the Dick Princess, and they have a hero named Cado, which is like a siege engine hero. He's a catapult as his bodyguard. He is new for this mod, and then they have uh, Udolva, the shaman hero. So Major a shaman essentially in the form of a Dick Scrub. Uh, but they do not have the Mayora fate. I believe they have the lesser date fate. But I read something about him being from Termina or at, at least being sent there at some point and uh, being connected to Mayora in some way. But anyway, the Echo Scrubs are certainly the best looking in this mod and has a really interesting roster here. They are not so small that you can hardly see them. They are actually pretty big for the Echo Scrubs. Similar in size, I believe, to the Kukiri. Maybe slightly shorter than the Kukiri, but still much taller than in the other two rosters. Okay, and then we have the Moblins, uh, led by King Ganon, who is no longer a giant. He's still big, he's a big blin, but he's not a giant anymore. In the old version, she was a giant. We have a new HD roster, which is really cool. I was the big fan of, of the female officers. They looked like cows, like uh, too friendly. In the old mod, they had uh, male officers that looked like orcs, but in, in this mod, uh, uh, they the, the female officers looked a bit too kind, in my opinion. But the the guys still look cool. Uh, like Ganon himself here looks pretty badass, and then the grunts here, men, male Mablins. The, the Mablins are not orcs, they are more like pigs, acting like orcs. So, yeah, they are like wild boars, uh, humanoid wild boars, uh, essentially. Playstyle, aggression, army focus, infantry slash cavalry, they are the horde faction, essentially. Um, heroes. Ganon and General Ugalon, female hero. I think it's the round faces that made them look a little bit too kind. Uh, the males still end up looking aggressive. Uh, we have King Balblin. He is actually similar to the other mod. He has a better model but looks essentially the same in style. Uh, because this hero was probably unique to Twilight Princess, so his style didn't change between the mods. Well, Ganon probably has a different style, and uh, Ugalon is unique to Harul's War, and uh, probably got changed to fit the new roster. And uh, then Demise is very similar to the old mod too, but he was in Harul Warriors as well. It looks slightly different. I actually like the model better here. It looks cooler. He has a cape and he has more detail. So he looks better. Uh, Ganon looks great but he's not a uh, guy and he's not as OP as in the other mod. Yeah. Okay. And by the way, some units of the Moblins probably have the horde formation. I usually remove the horde formation because units tend to get stuck in the game when they are about to enter the battlefield. When you if you place the faction, and then you have AI armies reinforcing you on the battlefield. Then, then if they have the horde formation, like many of the Moblin units had in Classic, then then they would get stuck and wouldn't be able to enter the battlefield. So I removed that formation and gave every single unit in the mod, including the Twilight units and the Moblin units, uh, the square formation because it never gets stuck. And uh, I don't know if that has been done here. I don't think so. So they, they might actually get stuck when they go in the battlefield in this mod. I need to playtest that, which is what we are gonna do. We're gonna playtest the mod and try to see if there are any bugs still there. If there are any uh, lingering bugs in the mod. And uh, if there is an issue with the Moblins not being able to reinforce properly on the battlefield because of the horde formation. I might actually have to replace the horde formation for all the units that are using it with the square formation. But I have a distinct or vague memory of maybe doing this already. Could be wrong. Or at least I, I think I've done it with the Twilight faction. 
but I don't know if I have done it to the Marblins uh, because many of the Twilight units got stuck, like the, the insects, the cargo rocks got stuck in almost every battle where they were to reinforce but when I gave them the square formation they didn't get stuck then they entered with that problem so, so I, I'm in favor of removing the horde formation in, in, in favor of the bug free square formation yeah okay so the Marblins they have King Ganon, Yanalugalon, King Balblin and the Mice, the Demon and I've added a script by the way that will transform this demise into the old four-legged demon demise when he is killed. So the other heroes have added Fee to the King of Hyrule, Fee the Fortunate. From the start, she spawns turn two like other guides. And uh, Sulcaris, ancient Sulcaris will spawn whenever Sulcaris is killed. So if, if ugly Sulcaris is killed, you get ancient Sulcaris, which looks way better uh, in, in terms of being beautiful. She has uh, the look of Saria, of the Kuhiri, but is a giant version of her, essentially. Okay, and... Um, yeah, that's it. Demise turns into dem the other demon, Demise. Then we have the Dark Knight Legion, the HD roster too. Leader is Selmbar, God of Flesh. We have their HD units. We have uh, Iraxonal, she's no longer a hero. I mean, she is, she's a hero, she's no longer a giant hero. So she has a unit following her in ba into battle and is no longer a giant. In classic, she was a single unit and uh, taking up the slot of a mount. Heroes, we have Selmbar, we have Vati, Vati and we have. Uh, um, Iraxonal and, and we have center on the Black Knight. So we have the same heroes, but one of them is no longer a giant. Um, Vati is a kind of a giant. He isn't a giant in his size, but he counts as a single unit entity. And when he's killed, he will turn into Vati Vrat, the proper giant form, the Drutaludi form of Vrat and uh, Vati. Okay, so I added that script to Vati, so he will transform when killed. The list Salfos, where I added Trinex, Lord of Turtle Rock is an extra hero on turn 2. With a unique strat model for him, that's why I added him, I thought it was too cool not to include. Okay, list Salfos, they are led by Queen uh, Nardo the White, and playstyle raiding, infantry cavalry, and heroes Nardo the White, Vak the Winged, Kakusha the Green, and and Talik the Red. By the way, the Dark Legion. They have defensive placed and they are mostly defending, yeah. Their home areas. Army focus, infantry spearmen. Yeah, they are an infantry focused faction. Very heavy infantry, even heavier than the, the Moblins. They have more armor. They have, so they at least of us, they are more like, uh, like a tactical faction. They uh, are supposed to, to ambush their enemies and such. But unlike in classic ultimate, they, they are not as weak. I believe the new roster of the Lizard Force have many similar units. They have some new ones too. And uh, unlike the old roster, they do very well in the campaign. So they have way better stats. They are strong in this mod. So don't expect the Lizard Force to be a pushover. They do very well in the campaigns. In the old mod, they were one of the weakest factions out of the playable ones, out of the the, the main factions, should I say. But in this mod, they are one of the stronger factions. Okay. Then we have the Labyrinth Rushim, led by Queen Solado Ambi, the good. And uh, she, the faction is not good, but Ambi was known for her good heart. Uh, she was known to be a kind ruler, but she was corrupted by the sorceress Viran. So she is kind of evil in, in this mod. So she is uh, uh, corrupted by this girl, this woman. Okay, to do bad things, like conquering their neighbors and such. So they have been overhauled too. Their roster is... Um, more like a Spaniard roster in this mod. They look more like Spaniards of the 17th or 16th centuries. 
they have very much the same units they have some new ones uh, but yeah they they look different and uh, they are changed a bit in their style the old roster was more world war one world war two style i believe well this one is more 1600s 1700s style but otherwise it's the same units essentially with some changes heroes are the same you have queen ambi looking essentially the same and then you have her son prince rallis who you get from the start no not rallis rallis is the prince of lanier province ralph actually ralph the engineer is her son and uh, he spawned in the late game in the classic version, but here you get him from the start. Then you have Veer and the Sorceress, and you have the Mark III of Labrina, the protector of Labrina. And the Mark III is still a general, uh, I mean a giant general, a giant hero, a single unit entity. But Viran is no longer a giant, he's just a normal general with a bit bodyguard, normal bodyguard, but she is still uh, much bigger than a normal unit. I believe she. Uh, She's at least twice as tall as a normal human, but she do not count as a giant hero anymore, so she's not as powerful. Okay, and she has a different style. She has a twilight, I believe twilight skin, instead of normal, uh, like, uh, skin. And uh, she still has the same hairstyle, but you don't see much of it because she has this uh, hood covers it. She looks more like an evil evil sorceress here. The other mod uh, uh, she still looked evil. She still had uh, this skin color I believe in the other mod. But, but she looked um, uh, she looked less like a Twily hero in the other mod and more like a fairy I believe. But anyway, because she was a fairy in Nep's lore before she became before she was banished to the Twilight Realm and became a Twily hero of sand who then returned to the, the continent of Hyrule and started to influence Queen Ambi of Labrina and became a Labrinian hero or villain or whatever. Anyway, she is different in her looks and is no longer a giant but otherwise it's the same heroes mostly the same units. Playstyle defensive, army focus, spearmen, archers. Yeah, but they do have a lot of yeah, they have gunners rather than archers. Okay, and then we have the Fairies of Tarm. They have a completely different roster in this mod. Looks nothing like the old one. Like uh, way more infantry and uh, and such. I still have a lot of range units but they look very different and are very different. In Classic Ultimate I added a lot of their new units to Classic but so it's more of a mix between the old and the new. They have all the old units and then they have at least five or six new ones but in in, uh, in this mod they only have the new ones and uh, yeah in the old one they had uh, almost no infantry but here they have quite a few infantry units that are not bad the old version they had like only bad infantry with the exception of one unit or two that were elite so they had elite infantry and basic infantry and no medium infantry in this version they have medium infantry too and yeah they have the same hero queen of all fairies the fairy queen uh, and uh, they are swarm faction siege mages they have a lot of uh, spell casters and uh, powerful siege engines in the form of fairies heroes they have the fairy queen they have venus queen of the mad she's new for this mod she's the queen of the mad mystics a specific type of fairy and then we have the saya the, sc the scared i believe she is essentially the same hero she's still a giant but looks very different here and then we have the essence of tarm he is no longer a giant hero. He is still a huge uh, being on the map. He's using the same model on the map, but uh, as in classic ultimate. But in battle, he is a siege engine, so he doesn't count as a giant anymore. He looks different in, in 
on the map compared to in battle because he's a siege engine in, in battle. But yeah, he he is still a hero. They have the same heroes, very different unit roster. And then the Stalfos, I believe also the fairies have unique gameplay features. So for example, certain units can only be recruited during spring and others only during winter. So it differs between the seasons what units you can recruit for the fairies of Tarm. The staff is down there, they are led by Lord of Castle, Vapid, same leader as in the other mod. They have a new roster, I ported all the neutral looking skeletons to Classic Ultimate, so you still have them in many of the new units in Classic Ultimate. You had all the old ones and then you have the new ones too. You don't have to get all the new ones. Here you have uh, remade redeads and remade stall troops and remade bubbles that we aren't in Classic Ultimate. You have some others remade too. Then you lack most of the undead, Gerudo, Dark Nuts, Hylians, etc. That we are not remade for the HD version because in Classic Ultimate and in the old versions of Hyrule to War, the undead had a unique necromancy script where, where you could uh, win battles and then a turn later so you got new troops based on the region you fought in and based on what units you fought. So if you won a battle against, let's say, the Kokiri, you got undead uh, of that region. So undead Kokiri, essentially st Stalken. No, not Stalk. Yeah, I think Stalken. Undead Kokiri. And then uh, if you fought Moblins, you got Peritamo, undead Moblins, etc., etc. But in this mod, most of those undead uh, units of specific races have been uh, removed. They have not been remade. So in this mod instead you have a lot of generic skeletons that are uh, not based directly from specific races uh, but uh, abominations made out of skeletons from different races. I think you still have the Stalk and the Undead Kukiri and you still have the Bubbles, the Undead Fairies but, but besides them I think it's mostly abominations that look like mixes between humans and Sora and the others. So yeah, this mod doesn't have the necromancy script because it was huge, took up a huge portion of the old mod's script file and wasn't re-added re here. So instead you have a different gameplay feature when you play this faction. That's why if you, you're gonna play the Stalfos, I think you should play uh, the Stalfos in both modes because it's a completely different experience if you play the Stalfos in this mod compared to in Classic Ultimate due to the very different gameplay scripts and such for the faction uh, but they have the same uh, core units and the same heroes essentially they have Lord Castle, the leader they have Undead Onux which is General Onux of the Forces of the Twilight when he is undead and then they have Star Lord, the Undead Dragon of Arbiter Grounds they have a new hero Malmord which is Undead Asrilli of the Shaker and she's new to this mod. I added her to the classic ultimate sub mod, but she wasn't originally in that mod. She's an HD hero. So yeah, they have a new hero, and instead they cut, I believe, Dead Hand as a hero, uh, who instead is a mercenary in this mod for the Shaker. And they cut Detail too, but they added Detail as a giant hero for this faction, so he is in the game. Yeah. So we have the Undead with completely different scripts and gameplay. Okay, and then we have the Shaka Kader. Leader is Lord Agonim. They have HD models, including the hero Shriek here. She's a very famous hero of the Sh Zelda franchise. She's Princess Zelda in Hiding. It's Princess Zelda 4 actually. So they are playstyle we can check the place that gorilla all my focus infantry archers so heroes lord agonim himself then we have impa the killer or sage of shadows both of them are old heroes and then we have bongo bongo the giant monstrosity of the shadow temple in the green of time he's still their giant unit three actually it's a three in harul to the war in Nep's lore. So Bongo was a 
an interlooper shake. Got executed. She did die and ended up as Bongo Bongo in the Shadow Temple. And uh, yeah, you start with her as Bongo Bongo in this latest later setting. In Classic Ultimate I added her as Bongo and when she was killed she turned into Bongo Bongo. And in this mod you start with her as Bongo Bongo. She is already dead at the start of the game. Then you have Shriek, which is Princess Zelda 4 in Hiding. So she is essentially the mother of uh, Princess Zelda 5, the leader of the Kingdom of Hyrule. And um, she is the daughter of Princess Zelda 3, which is the Zelda of the Majora faction. So she, she is in the game, but she is only Zelda on the map. She's using the model of Zelda 4 on the map, but is Sheik in battle. Okay, so the Sheik, they have essentially the same units too. They have a few new ones and a few cut ones, I believe, but mostly the same. Sheik has replaced, I believe, uh, Esrilli as a hero, because Esrilli is now the undead hero Malmord for the Stalfos. And Bongo is Bongo Bongo at the start. Okay, then we have the Kingdom of Icana. The reason it says this faction is a work in progress is because this faction hasn't received their HD models. So they look exactly the same and is exactly the same as in Classic Ultimate. It's the same roster and the same heroes. You have King Igos to Icana, their king. Then you have the Princess Gomez. And you have the Gar Master Ninja leader. And then you have I believe uh, Captain Tita, the giant undead hero or commander of the Akanian army. So you have the same heroes as in Classic Ultimate and the same units as in Classic Ultimate and no hero picture because they haven't been overhauled. And the Nephilim was originally gonna overhaul every single faction in the game and I believe the two factions that the three factions that weren't finished were the River Sora. Kingdom of Icana and the forces of the Twilight. <coughs> so that's why they are the same. I know that for uh, Hyrule Conquest, because he ported the mod to Hyrule Conquest, I mean to, to Zero ID, a different game engine, and renamed, rebranded re it Hyrule Conquest. Uh, I believe that he also re added all the HD rosters there for every faction and remade some of them, so they are not exactly the same for everyone. And uh, the latest roster he made was the River Sora, so they have been remade in, in Hyrule Conquest, but haven't been remade in Hyrule Total War. But there exists better models for them now. Yeah, as for the Force of the Twilight and the King of Icana, I don't believe they have any modern models. But I've seen pictures of modern models of uh, Midna and other Twilight heroes and units, so suspect that Nine Nephilim had HD models of the Forces of the Twilight but never got to actually implement them into the game. Okay. So we have the old Icanian army with a new symbol. <coughs> they are generalist and army focus, infantry, commanders, same as the Kingdom of Hyrule. But unlike the Kingdom of Hyrule they are very high experience. When you recruit them they have nine experience at recruitment. <coughs> because they, their history is that they were cursed by the goddesses of Hyrule uh, into the, and banished into the realm of Termina after they, uh, I believe, betrayed the goddesses and uh, followed a, a false god, the, the dark Majora himself and uh, they were punished and cursed with undeath so they are not really undead like the Stalfos because they do have minds of their own unlike the Stalfos that are essentially skeletons and zombies led by necromancers so only the necromancers have minds of their own the leaders and the rest are just mindless zombies and skeletons well the kingdom of Icana they are not mindless they are uh, they have minds and they can think for themselves but they look like undead because they are cursed by the goddesses with undeath and unlike other factions they have uh, also been cursed to constantly re uh, relieve the civil war in Termina, so they have constantly been battling 
which is why when you recruit troops in this faction you get units at experience level 9 so they are actually pretty good okay and then we have the <coughs> forces of the twilight under queen midna but when you start a campaign you can pick either queen midna or king sand so you can pick which hero you want and the other heroes are if you place queen midna you get general onox i know that he should be dead but they added him because he had a strat model for him too and because we had two meadows so then i thought why not that the onox guy for the force of the pilot but if we were to follow lore he would be dead by this point and be only in the stalfos faction and meadow wouldn't be in the kukiri he would only be in the goma faction by this time and um, in the twilight faction you get general onox the live version and then you get una the brave great fairy una and you get i believe uh, so you have midna you have una you have onox and then you get argorg the dragon that they implemented a giant dragon hero of the twilight and if you place the king sand faction uh, king sand instead it's the same faction in this mod they are not different factions the other sand faction was cut but if you play a sand instead you get sand and then you get his pet Olg, and then you get onox and you get argor the dragon so you get argor the dragon and onox no matter what and then you get Olg instead of una if you play as sand and you get sand instead of midna uh, as for um, the ai if you play as any other faction than the twilight then i believe that the <coughs> that uh, uh, the AI faction of the Force of the Twilight will be led by King Sand and will have access to the other heroes Una, Argot the Dragon, General Onux, and Olg. And Midna will be cut, and then Midna will actually spawn for the Oduna province, the Kingdom of Hyrule, or the Lana Euro province as a hero if you play as the faction. She can randomly spawn in the late game to a, to a guild. Uh, as either Imp Midna or Princess Midna, uh, which is random, and uh, she will then have a strat model on the map and, and a unique model in battle too. Princess Midna is essentially the same model as um, Queen Midna, used with her hair hidden by, I believe, uh, uh, some kind of uh, like headgear. I believe she, she doesn't show her, her hair and she doesn't have the crown of the twilight well the queen model is the same model where she shows the hair like on this picture and where she has the, the like the crown emblem of the twilight faction um, the Minna model is completely different so if you play as queen Midna I don't believe that you will <coughs> face King Sand. However, in the Twilight Realm there is like a rebel held areas there. So I believe that Prince Sand and uh, Lady Midi will spawn as rebels. And you can then kill them off in the civil war there against the rebels. If you play Sand, then I believe that in Midna will spawn as the AI on turn 5th or something and invade you. So, so she will show up as an enemy then. And if you play anyone else, Sand will lead the Twilight Realm. And Midna won't probably show up unless you play as one of the three factions I mentioned. Runa Province, Kingdom of Hyrule, or Lana Euro Province, where you will get in Midna or Princess Midna in the late game. When you have built a guild, then they will spawn randomly, I believe. Okay, so Twilight Faction has the same roster as in the old mod, the same heroes. I added Olg and uh, Olg was a sub mod hero so I added him to this mod too and then General Onox very added he was cut and I re-added Argrok the dragon he was cut too and then the units I believe that uh, the repentance were cut from the recruitment so I re-added repentance to the light building of the Twilight faction they have two buildings you build first the Twilight barracks and after that you can build either the light building or the dark building. And in the previous version 4.6 you had uh, 
Bone Mold Monks, I believe, in both buildings, and you didn't have the Repentance at all. But Midna would spawn with Repentance if she spawned as an Imp. Uh, in this version, I have re-added the Repentance to the Light Building and moved, uh, moved the Bone Mold Monks to the Dark Building. Uh, so that has been changed back to it where previously, but otherwise it's uh, the same as in 4.6. Okay, and uh, then we have the River Sora. They also have the old roster. Leader is King Sarsef in this mod. In the old mod it was Princess Sukuf, the one on the picture. So I don't know if it's correct that it should be King Sarsef. I think King Sarsef is... Um, <coughs> Nep's lore is the <coughs> on paper leader of the faction. He is the one leading the army and such. Giant Riversora Viking style unit or hero. But in in lore it's actually Princess uh, Sukuf that is the brains of the faction. So she's the true leader. She manipulates her father essentially. So she is the leader. Yeah, but the text here says Sarusef, that, that's probably because he is the, the official leader and he's the one leading the army. He is not the faction, uh, he is not the one thinking for the faction, I guess. Playstyle raiding, army focus, spearmen, and uh, siege heroes. This faction is working progress, yeah. Okay, so this faction do not have the unique script anymore where they spawn units next to rivers but they are still different from the other factions but yeah they play different from in classic but has the same roster the same army and I added the Octosora unit here too they were also not available in, in the recruitment okay and then we have the order of the Visrobe they are the last HD faction of the mod they were remade and have the same units as in the old mod, the exact same units, but they have HD models, they look much better in this mod. Uh, and uh, the armored acolytes is from this are from this mod of course. So they are the same. The heroes are the same. We have High Lady False Goddess, we have Nostrum and the Pyromancer we have Karok, the Illusionist, and we have Lana, the mage. She wasn't in the old mod. Instead we had Sia the mage, but Lana and Sia are the same character, is the same character. Uh, it's just that Lana is a younger version of Sia before her hair turned grey or dark or black or whatever. And uh, before she became corrupted by the magics, before she became evil essentially. I believe Sia is an evil version of Lana and... Uh, a later version. If, if she's killed in the campaign you get Sia, by the way. I added that script, so she starts as Lan and if she dies you get Sia. Uh, all the heroes have new models. Karok and Ostrom look much better, like all the Visrobe units. Lana is very good looking too, the model, very HD. And uh, unlike in the old version. She has the same animation now as in Custom Battle, where she floats around on the battlefield. Same with Sia. Uh, they did in Custom Battle, Lana and Sia had a unique animation where they were floating around and such, using magics to move. Well, in, in, in the campaign, they just moved like normal generals uh, by running around. And uh, <coughs> I added that animation to all their Visro generals the generic general animation so she and any other general of the Visro will fly around now, which is pretty cool Hylia um, looks very much the same but she has glasses here I guess or some kind of um, different look in the face there but she's very much the same used to the HD model actually liked her face better here looked more detailed Okay, so the Visrobe faction, they have the same units, but with better models, essentially. And I, do, I think they have a different gameplay features too. They do not have the script where they can take over areas by sending bishops. I don't think so, at least. 
this faction would be fun to play as we're not gonna play them right now then we have the church of Miura <coughs> led by the dark and Miura himself this faction is a work in progress yeah they also have the old models for Miura himself and for Zelda 3 and uh, <coughs> the old demon models and the disciples of Miura are still using the old female diplomat model of the kingdom of Hyrule from the old version but most of their roster are using HD models actually because this faction can recruit units of all the other factions except very few ones so for example if you take Moblin areas you can get Moblin units if you take Hylian areas you can get Hylian units etc etc and they have Icanian units at their starting area in addition to their demons and disciples so Meora has the core units of five demon units the seekers of Meora the rat entities the uh, no sorry the, yeah the rat entities the mask entities and uh, the eyes of Meora and they have the disciples of Meora and uh, the seekers seeker entities uh, so Meora has five unique demon units or spawns of Meora and uh, including the disciples which is like female highlands with masks of Miora uh, on their faces and uh, then they have in addition to that they have the soldiers of Aghanim their only Shaker unit so they do not have access to the Shaker army anymore like they have in classic ultimate because in custom battle in this mod they didn't have the Shaker so they didn't add a Shaker to them so they do not have Shaker units except the soldiers of Aghanim and the soldiers of Aghanim are not the old model they have been um, remade into an HD model so they have a unique model for the soldiers of Aghanim but the old models for the Miura spawns and the disciples and then if they recruit any of the other factional units like the Moblins, the Hylians etc they have the HD models not the old models so they have the same HD models as other factions and the uh, Princess Zelda 3 is an old model from I believe October 2014 well the HD roster of the Kingdom of Hyrule is dated I believe February or January 2015 so it's half a year older the hero uh, in, in the old mod she has, had a unique bodyguard of ironclad leads with a unique Miura skin really cool skin they are not using that hero model uh, bodyguard anymore they are not using that bodyguard anymore instead they are using the ironclad leads of this mod they are using the HD Ironclad Elites and they do not have any unique skins but they didn't need that because <coughs> their units do not show their faces they have uh, helmets covering their face so uh, you don't need purple Miura skins for the faces as you do not see their faces anyway and uh, they do not wield shields neither so you don't need any Majora skin on the shields because there are no shields there. So Majora Zelda is using an updated Ironclad Elite bodyguard, but is herself using the old model. And uh, there are a few factions that won't be available to Majora. So uh, the Church of Majora do not have um, the Shake anymore, but instead they have the Order of the Visrobe, so they can recruit the, the Visrobe units from Vigaro is pretty cool and then they also have access to the kingdom of Arcanus units and the units of the forces of the twilight so the Arcanian and the twilight units are available to the church of Miura I, in classic you do not have access to the vis robe and you do not have access to the twilight or Arcanian units this is because I didn't know that they were supposed to have the vis robe units and I also didn't know that they were not supposed to have the the Shaker units, so I did a mistake there. And as as for the for the Twilight and the Canyon units, I believe that in the original plans, Nep wrote that they wouldn't have those units. It was uncertain, but um, that they would have certain units from their factions, like the Canyon Death Shamans, which are wearing masks of Miura, or the avatars of Miura Twilight Abominations, which are using masks of Miura too. But besides those units, they weren't stated to use any of the units of those factions. But in this mod, I found that they had the entire roster of the Kingdom of Icana and the forces of the Twilight in custom battles I had to add to the faction. And uh, 
the V-Throbe file can also be available in custom, so I added that to well, the Shrek are not available, so I didn't add them in this version. And um, besides that, they still do not have access to the Goma, the spiders. So they wouldn't be religious and follow me, right? And they do not have access to the Undead Stalfus neither. So they are not religious, they are mindless zombies. And the necromancers wouldn't follow me, right? So they do not have the Stalfus, they do not have the Goma, and they do not have the Shrek. And they also do not have the river Sora because they are feral wild Sora from the waters or rivers of Hyrule. And they wouldn't follow me or either. So they don't have the river Sora, they don't have the Stalfos, they don't have the Goma, and they don't have the Shrekia. Uh, all the other factions are available to the Church of Miora from their regions. From the starting area you get the Kingdom of Icana's units and their own demons and soldiers of Agnim and avatars of Miora, I believe. Unless I remove them, I don't, I don't believe that to be the case. So the Church of Miora and the Uka, they were minor factions in 4.6 that weren't placed out on the map. I believe the Uka had a, uh, an area called the Heavens in the corner of the map that weren't available for anyone to, to attack. You couldn't go there and they couldn't go to Hyrule. They were available to the Pope faction calling cl cleansings on other factions of Hyrule, including Meora, uh, or Meora followers like the King of Icana and the Force of Twilight. Uh, the Church of Meora were also in the campaign, but we didn't represent the map. We had rebel areas, I believe the, the um, <coughs> Icanian rebel area of Aizen, and the Icanian rebel area of uh, Falling Bastion had the Meora rebels in it. So you had uh, <coughs> you had Miura rebels on the map in two areas, but you didn't have Miura as the faction on the map. You did have the faction in the campaign, so you could get bad uh, relations with Miura or good relations with Miura based on your actions as the Kingdom of Ekana or the Force of the Twilight. If you did things Miura didn't like, you got. Uh, bad relations and if you did things that the faction liked you got good relations but they were not actually in the campaign and the only time you fought Miora demons were if you attacked Aizen or the Fallen Bastion uh, and fought the rebels there. Instead I added a faction to the campaign and gave them the Fallen Bastion an Icanian rebel area uh, and gave them that as their capital. I added the Miura Prime City as their capital city. And uh, yeah, they are playable. They have their demons. They have every single faction available in custom battle. Available. Uh, their units are available. But you need to conquer the right areas to get them and upgrade the right buildings. You might need to conquer a specific area. And then you might need to upgrade the settlement to a specific level before you get access to the right building and then you need to, to build the right building and before you get the units so it will take a while if you conquer for example the lowest form of settlement a hamlet which is even lower than a village if you conquer a hamlet for Runa, for example it will still take a while until you have upgraded it into a town or large town uh, which will then allow you to build the right building, an Odunian building. They have access to all the buildings of the other factions, and then you can recruit their units. But it will take a while, and before that you can only recruit their main core units, the demons, the spawns of Miora, and the des disciples of Miora, and the uh, soldiers of Aghanim. I included the soldiers of Aghanim as, uh, as one of their core units, as it's a new model for this mod, and they do not have any other Shrekia units anyway. Okay, so Miura is a new faction and they have Zelda 3 and Miura himself as a hero. They only have two heroes here. And they have the strap models on the map too. Yeah, and the Uka are also in the game still, but they are a minor faction, they are not playable. Okay, the Miura faction, and we were gonna place them. But, um, yeah, we will check all the factions. I want to show them off a little bit. So they have new strap models and such, and some new heroes. So let's check them. Let's 
start the campaign.